What's up guys? Super early, never really wake and vlog like this, but I uh, woke up at like 6am, my physics final is at 9.45, and just kind of been in and out of sleep, catching up on some YouTube and stuff. Uh, it's kind of hard to wake up hungry and then pass back out, so uh, on these non-training days, I just play my cardio by ear. Some days I won't do cardio, if I wake up and I feel energetic or like I want to, you know, wake up, I'll go, so... Instead of laying around till 9 and eating, I'm going to go burn some cows, get myself running, um, have my meal, and then come after my final, I'll probably still be in a deficit. I can just kind of keep eating, keep up with my meals. But one thing that's super awesome about waking up this morning is epic stuff going on on YouTube. We got a brand new Evanson Dupani video that's like 17 minutes long. And my boy Nick Fit just uploaded his morning vlog. So sick timing and something interesting for you guys. I don't know when I'll get to this and I'm trying to get my mom to send me some more pictures. But I finally, I am try, I don't want to do a transformation video like a super dramatic one, but here's some pictures I coaxed my mom into sending me what I used to look like. It's like an extra small shirt. So as you see, my bicep, triceps, forearms, and chest, they were all sunken in uh, until I started lifting weights. So like my elbow was thicker, my joints were thicker than like all my bones and muscles. So pretty crazy. Uh, I haven't seen those pictures in about seven years. My mom and my dad split up and they took all the pictures. Oh, there's my alarm. They took all the pictures and stuff and uh, they kind of just been boxed ever since. But anyways, it's crazy. I'll catch you guys soon. Peace. Walk physics two final down. Got another final in like 12 hours. What up guys, just got home from physics, caught up on some YouTube. It's almost noon and I haven't eaten since that uh, post-workout cardio pancake. I don't think I showed you, but it was 50 protein, 15 fat. So what's crazy when you're prepping is I hit like a 500 calorie cardio session and I came home and I ate not even 500 calories with no carbs, so really no insulin spiking. And uh, then I went and did my test, now I'm back. So it's the deficit I'm creating, oftentimes is really, really low, or really like aggressive. So um, I'm gonna go eat now. We're gonna eat at Fat Busters. I'll show you guys what it is, but I'll give you a quick update on how I'm looking before we ride out. We gotta eat, we gotta eat. All right guys, so woke up 193 on the dot. See, even if I let my stomach hang, it's looking nice and lean. So we're right there guys. Alright, let's go get this meal. I'll show you it on my iPhone and I'll probably get a meal for later and bring it home. So uh, let's check it out. It's gonna be really good. Turkey lasagna, chicken, turkey, brown rice, and turkey it's lasagna. Content. Turkey on that is about 10 grams of fat. On the turkey lasagna? Yeah, lasagna. 10 grams of fat? About, about? perfect. Uh huh. Yes, no te no tiene casi nada de grasa. 10 grams of fat lasagna, turkey lasagna. I'm gonna try this for you guys, but I'm gonna eat in peace and catch some tubes. Wow. That's prep dieting for you guys. You mad? What's up guys, let's get right into this voiceover. Um, started off my workout with chest flies. I know, pretty unusual, but uh, since I do hit chest twice a week, I don't always start with the heavy compounds. And uh, yeah, nothing too special here, but I will leave the third set in so you guys can see. I did about three warm-up sets, a lot of muscle activation in between with my red TheraBand and stuff like that. But these felt really, really good. Starting fresh with an accessory movement or a fly movement was totally different than anything I felt the past few workouts. It really gives you the energy to 
contract and focus on the muscle before it's tired or before you're mentally tired. And since I'm on low carbs, this is my third day of less than 50 carbs. And then I call my coach tonight and he tells me what to do for the next three days, I'm doing like three day increments. So, uh, so yeah, being no carb, I wanted to start fresh with a different movement and it actually felt really good. But I'll let you watch the rest of this and then the pressing after and I'll pop back in. Alrighty guys, so I'll stick with you for the rest of the workout. I hit decline dumbbell after. It's a movement I don't like. I do not like decline dumbbell and I do not like incline barbell for how it feels on my shoulders. So I figured since I was really warmed up and pre-exhausted, I would go light, not worry about you know ego lifting. And uh, just attempt to work on my form. My problem with decline dumbbell is I feel like when I come down, I don't get to have a comfortable like arm position I feel like I'm doing this like my hands are falling in and my shoulders taking a load so I really gotta work on dropping my shoulder blades which is nothing I have to do on any pressing movement except the decline so I don't know if it's my chest rib cage or uh, shoulder structure but when I watch guys like Matt Ogis or um, Alberto Nunez hit decline dumbbells it looks really natural almost like a regular bench press but again I need to be careful comparing myself to guys who are 5'6", five, 5'7", five, because I am 5'11", with lankier proportions on top of it. So yeah, definitely can get into trouble if you watch uh, blockier and stronger guys that are a lot shorter. So just be aware of that, guys. And after the incline barbell, I would just hit 135, so nothing special really there. I left the set in motion so you guys could see what I was going for. I hit some more dumbbell flies. These felt really good. You can see my hands are like uh, kind of open, and I'm really pulling the chest apart. Not something I recommend just to jump into, but it is a different feeling. So all in all, not too quick of a chest workout because I did rest a lot in between my sets. I wanted to take my time in the gym, um, you know, kind of stay out of the kitchen, make my workout long so I could just relax, not rush it. And uh, to finish off, all I did was overhead tricep extensions. Five sets, I only recorded four because the, the first set I thought was going to be a warm-up, but 47.5 pounds felt really, really nice. Anytime you have the long head in a very stretched position, guys, be careful. Uh, I've heard it's um, you're more likely to tear a tricep doing movement like that, and I actually know a bodybuilder at my posing gym who tore his tricep doing that with like 30 pounds. So always be careful when you're in this deep stretch position, guys. You don't have to be too careful if you're just doing press downs, but anytime your arm is over your head, considering we probably don't do this a lot in general, be careful. But hit two sets of crunches, obviously warmed up a lot, got a little bit of volume in, but went heavy, controlled, and I'll let you guys watch these last couple sets. And there's a cardio talk after, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I know the workout and the footage was quick, but uh, felt really good. So I'll see you guys Friday when I train again. Peace.
getting this grinder cardio session, guys. It's a little loud I'm by the road, but just really, really quick, nothing special today, but I'm listening to an Alberto Nunez Q&A, and he uh, pretty much verbatim just said something about how far scientific or scientifically evidence-based training has come. And it's funny because obviously we know progressive overload, getting stronger on your compound lifts is really the catalyst to getting big, consistently, measurably. But um, today when I started with flies, because I was watching an Evan Centipani and um, what's his name? Oscar Arden, Arden, Oscar Arden, his trainer, uh, they started the training session with warming up on the machine fly and then going heavy, brutal sets and then decline and then incline. So I pretty much copied that. But um, normally when I go to flies, you know, I feel it pretty well. Some days I'm like, oh yeah, I feel it really good after hitting bench. And some days you kind of feel a little numb because you're tired. On my warm ups today, I did like 60 pounds, 70 pounds, 90 pounds. And then the working sets were like 100, 110, 120. I wrote it down on my phone so that when I edit the video, it'll be accurate. But guys, on that first set, the second or third rep, the squeeze I got, like literally hurt from up here down my chest. And the next consecutive couple reps, I was like, holy crap, I haven't felt a chest contraction like this in months. So obviously it's best, you know, to work on your bench press, to work on the compounds, but these accessory movements are great. And if you start some workouts with these accessory movements, guys, I think you'll be surprised at how much energy and how much stimulus you can focus on them. So if you guys are stuck in a rut or on some sort of powerlifting program and you're not a competitive powerlifter, on your accessory days, throw in some accessory bro movements and just give them a shot when you're super, super fresh. And I think you're gonna like it because that chest fly, I literally, literally, sorry, I literally feel sore where I hit those muscles and my pressing and everything felt great after. Obviously I wasn't that strong, but like I said, flies give you a different stimulus and if you start fresh with them, damn, that was really, really, really intense. So pretty happy with it. Overall the workout was great and I'll see you guys soon.